Hello, Sumiji. Welcome, ma'am. It's going to be me today um, at this uh, hour. Welcome. So the topic here is, as you can see, it is sleep and the need for us to sleep. So I see a lot of us cesareans who are literally burning the midnight oil and uh, I just wanted to address this because it is key for any one of us who wants to live an optimum life. So welcome everyone. Um, just wanted to start sharing what the idea is behind all this. Okay, so let me start doing this. Okay, so a lot of us are probably already aware what we are doing uh, with our nightly tech habits and that's what I wanted to start off with. So a 2019 common sense media study says 68% of teens they take their devices to their rooms at bedtime and one third have their phone with them in the bed. So as you can imagine, even parents, adults are also waking up to their phones at least once a night, usually to check social media or to respond to a notification. So... Sarvaji, welcome, ma'am. Radhe, Radhe. So I wanted to talk about uh, sleep and how our habits are actually going to destroy us from living an optimum life. Gyan, good. <laughs> welcome, sir. Okay, so here um, I just have a few things to share. Uh, let me do one thing. I'm going to start sharing some stats and then we'll talk. Okay. So technology and our habits. Okay. So how technology affects our sleep. That is the section here. So let me write it down. Hello, Abhaji. Welcome, sir. How are you? So how tech affects our sleep. So that is the topic right now. Let me show this. So if you notice what we are doing, Good night sleep and why is it important is the topic of the day. And uh, just wanted to put all the stats out here. There are some very, very alarming stats that we all need to understand about our relationship with our devices and our relationship with our phones. So thank you. Gyan good. Thank you, sir. Okay. So as you can see, So 10% of all Americans leave their ringers when they go to bed. So across the board, I'm sure uh, across the world, this a few of us have to leave our ringers on because of which text messages and calls are coming in on a nightly basis. So what I have seen is uh, my iPhone has just given out this update where uh, you can set up all the notifications to come at one specific time. Um, that you choose to and not keep on bothering you. So that's one good thing that has come up. So as you can see, so the National Sleep Foundation here, uh, negative sleep experiences because of technology use. As you can see, a lot of issues for students, parents, adults, who are getting a lot disturbed because of their tech habits. So this is what we are going to be elaborating on here. Okay, so let's do this. And why is this all important? What is the point of us talking about our relationship with technology and our sleep? And why is sleep so important? We are going to be talking about all that. Absolutely, Abheji. Yeah, the, especially as SSRians, we are doing a lot of work and sometimes char baje tak your Twitter spaces chalti hai. I know. <sighs> the reason why I brought up this topic is because uh, the situation right now is uh, we are at a big sleep loss epidemic around the world and uh, if we don't address it quickly, it's going to be catastrophic effects for our brain and our 
body so that is the reason why this topic is very very important so let's do this i just want to um, share a few things as we go along uh, so what has happened over the past 75 years what is happening over the past 75 years what has changed because of which we are getting less and less sleep every single day so as you can see our relationship with our technology has also evolved because of which you know obviously we are electrifying our nights that is the first thing the first thing is we are electrifying our nights we are staying up longer and longer with our phones the second thing is the work life balance that corporations have created we are there is no real time and place where work ends and where our personal life starts so the relationship between work working from home uh, the usage of technology for our work everything has made the line between work and leisure very very blurry so that is also leading us to stay up late uh, late in the night trying to address the emails at work you know a lot of things and of course we know the third point because of which we are, why we are staying up much much later is because if you remember thomas edison who had invented the light bulb before he invented that we were sleeping 10 hours a night but right now only 25% of adults are getting 8 hours worth of sleep in the world so only 25% so it is very very um, scary and sad so obviously the light bulb also the light bulb revolution the technology revolution they have all contributed to where we are so so that is uh, 2000 so i have a statistics right here in 1942 less than 8% of the population was surviving on 6 hours of sleep and in 2017 only 1 in 2 is so 50% of the population is surviving on less than 6 hours of sleep which is very very sad okay so let's go on to the next one i just show have a small video to show you but let's see what happens when you look at your smartphone screen when it's dark Can you imagine that the light from the gadget has the same effect as the morning sun? It makes your brain stop producing melatonin. It's the hormone. So if you can see there is a confusion of the biorhythms that is happening because of which what we are doing is we are sleeping very late and we are also waking up very late in the morning. So it means that we are confusing our natural biorhythm that is expecting us to sleep when the sun is down. and wake up uh, with the sun right so we are not doing that we are trying to reverse it because of which our biorhythm is also getting affected hormone which is necessary for your sound sleep but what is more melatonin also makes the development of cancer and other diseases slow down or prevents it completely so when you are in gross So one second let me just go back to that screen other diseases now. slow down or prevents it completely So one of the most important things that you will notice here is the word the hormone melatonin um if you haven't heard of that word uh, ever um i can explain to you what it is but melatonin is the hormone that gets an indication from the nature that it is our time to start slowly unwinding for the day and sleep but what happens is because our skin okay also has photoreceptors and also because we are continuously consuming the blue light using our phones it is getting more and more difficult for our body to send a signal to the brain that melatonin it is time for melatonin to be released and what happens when melatonin is not getting released you don't feel like sleeping much much later so what is the whole point of melatonin let me explain using so okay actually i have a very good link here if you see i will read out a few things and then i'll explain to you in the form of a diagram here so the blue light from the digital devices is blocking melatonin 
sleep and it is shifting the circadian clock. So what is the circadian clock? If you would have noticed anything like this, so also let me show you this one this is also very important. This is probably a better picture than the other one. Okay. So if you see, this is, uh, you must have seen this picture quite a bit, but if you see this in the 24 hour day cycle, our body also has been over the years tuned to stay in a biorhythm like this. So our most active time of the day, which is the highest alertness is 10 a.m. But before that, so many things have to happen. So 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock is the best time to learn anything. So 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. is the best time in the day to learn anything. And here the body is getting ready for a bowel moment. Okay, so melatonin secretion stops, bowel movement, and highest alertness at 10 a.m. This is how we were supposed to actually have our circadian rhythm set up in our body. Okay, so the best time, the, the latest time that they suggest, the National Sleep Foundation and everything suggests is by 11 o'clock at the latest. I mean, it's better if you can hit the sack at 10 o'clock, but by 11 o'clock at least you're sleeping. Four hours it takes for you to reach the deepest state of sleep so that neurotoxins in the body can be cleared. So I'm going to explain to you that in much detail, but right now, please understand that we are actually shifting the circadian rhythm if we are not sleeping on time. And what is technology doing to us? So if you see this, the blue light from the digital devices, and uh, um, I have these uh, blue light blocker. So the minute it is seven o'clock, I start using these glasses. So once sun sets here, we are in the Northern Hemisphere in Atlanta. So I don't, uh, so it gets a little, um, it is in the Northern Hemisphere. So it takes a while for the sun to set. But once the sun has set at seven, 7.30, I put on the glasses. These are the blue light blocker glasses. The very cheap on Amazon that I bought. I mean, I'm sure you'll find it wherever you're looking for it um, on the internet. But blue light blockers. So what is happening is, of course, I'm still not safe because my skin has photoreceptors. So with the light bulb and everything, I'm still not kicking in the melatonin as much as I want to. So circadian shifts are happening and what is the problem with the circadian shifts happening we will talk about it uh, and if you want to there are stats and there are things that i'm going to show you which are going to prove to you that if you don't sleep if you don't have your seven to nine hours of recommended sleep you just are not going to see your 60s it is just as simple as that i just cannot tell you in a more harsher way, unfortunately. So um, if you see here, uh, LED devices have been shifting our natural clock, okay? Our deep sleep state has been jeopardized. We are not sleeping, eating, pooping. We are not doing anything well. It is extremely important that we understand how our smartphones are affecting us. So what is happening with smartphones? So let me show you Zightboard. The biggest problem with smartphones is, so if you see, dude, what is happening here? One second, let me try to copy this once again. Okay, there you go. So here, if you see, let me zoom in. Oops, I cannot zoom this in. The biggest problem with the technology around us is we are not releasing the amount of melatonin that we want. We are completely, we are becoming like this. You know, uh, I found this very cute uh, <laughs> setting an alarm for 7 a.m. at 3 a.m. And you are literally, your eyes are dilated and you literally can't even see <laughs> the screen. But you still want to stay up, uh, stay awake because you want to catch up on things. So, and that is exactly what is happening right now. We are... Uh, generating less and less melatonin which is required which is extremely important it's an anti-cancer natural anti-cancer agent that the body produces 
we are becoming hyper vigilant because we want to solve all the problems of the world while we are on the internet we are we want to get on to twitter spaces we want to uh, comment on youtube uh, videos we want to do everything to change the world in a better place while we are also jeopardizing our sleep and of course the third most important that technology thing is doing to us which is not making us sleep is fear of missing out if we sleep what if we will miss an update like has aryan khan gotten bail or not i don't want to wait for 2:45 pm uh, i i would rather just stay up awake to make sure that the right news is delivered so you know we are just doing a lot of things that are going to affect our uh, body in the long term so okay sorry guys i'm just checking your uh, messages right now so aish ji welcome sir that is amazing some family has started switching off wifi at the night that is amazing because uh, that is what we also do but uh, our 17 year old keeps on fighting with us that he has homework to do but he won't get to the homework until 10 o'clock in the night so that is a battle that we are constantly fighting so so absolutely carolyn uh, absolutely carolyn yes ma'am uh, yeah and uh, technology big tech is ruling the roost here and we are not realizing that we are in its agenda and not going by our agenda and it is extremely important that we realize what the smartphones and technology uh, around us and these incandescent these light bulbs everything uh, are doing to us um so neend na aane ki bimari ke starting se aise hi hote late night tak tak ka jagne se yeah absolutely it is a vicious cycle abhi ji uh, you know you sleep late you wake up late then you sleep late you wake up late so that is uh, one of the things that i want to show you here how it gets perpetuated um, let me show you a quick uh, i think yeah so this is yeah this is the one so there is uh, something called the homeostatic sleep drive and if you are able to slowly so see 7 am you start you wake up and the sleep pressure which is called the homeostatic sleep drive is at the lowest then but as the day progresses at 11 pm it is at peak where you are where your eyes are so droopy and you want to fall asleep and you cannot stay awake but of course what we do is we keep that pressure on and we don't go to bed um, because of which there are other problems that we have to face but here if you see 7 am to 11 pm and then you give in to the homeostatic sleep drive and you sleep off and then it goes down again when you wake up the sleep cycle continues so the build up of that sleep drive if you keep pushing it away it is very very dangerous uh, to the body and uh, we will see how uh, okay so this is the trend ncb people are with you okay so this is what uh, mac world wants to trend okay so thank you mac world for the notification welcome 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 okay thank you so much soheli ji welcome ma'am absolutely yeah so um i have a lot of my cousins a lot of my family members i have a lot of fr- friends you know it just uh, just makes me so sad uh, that if you notice what reed hastings the gentleman who is uh, okay so this is what the ceo of netflix had openly said so let me try to push this a little bit here oops one second yari uh, why do i have to keep okay so let's try to okay so this is what he has said we are competing with sleep that is what reed hastings said because that is their entire business model literally reed hastings the ceo of netflix has said this that their entire business model competes with sleep so if you try to understand how their bottom line is affected if you don't sleep that is a win for their bottom line so many uh, the people that i know watch binge watch netflix there is nothing wrong in binge watching netflix i'm just 
begging you and praying to you that you do any of that binging before 11 p.m. Preferably half an hour before you hit the snoozies because uh, staying with technology. So this is literally Reed Hastings, CEO of Netflix has said that, that their entire business model works with them competing with our sleep. So, um, okay. So what happens with blue light exposure and what is the point of us having to boost melatonin. Why do we have to worry about melatonin? Okay, so I cannot tell you enough about melatonin. I mean, it will take me two hours to just talk about melatonin, but I'll try to be quick. First things first is, I personally know people who are giving their four-year-olds and five-year-olds two tablets of melatonin every night so that their children can go to bed. But all they literally have to do is take away their damn devices, put them away, naturally take them to their bedrooms and just slowly let them unwind and go to bed naturally. But what we are doing is because the children are not sleeping later and later because of the blue light from the devices, we think that it is a problem uh, with the kids oh they have adhd uh, they have all kinds of uh, deficits they are very hyperactive let them give uh, some adderall or ritalin or let them let let us just put the some give them some anti anxiety medication let's drug them up and let's put them to bed no please try to understand that the stimulation that we are getting is because of how our devices are making us act. They are not letting the melatonin kick in naturally. We are exposing our eyes and our skin, skin which has photoreceptors, and the brain is not getting an indication that it is time to go to sleep. And, uh, you know, there's so many bedtime rituals that you can do. You can slowly cool down the room, because, uh, you know, it just becomes a very nice, dark, cool room so that your body naturally can figure out that it is time to sleep. You're thermoregulating your own body to be able to sleep naturally. I, uh, it's just uh, such a, it's a topic that is so, it's, and this is, but no, we are doing all this to ourselves with technology, which is, very, very um, sad. Uh, of course, you know, the, the National uh, Sleep Foundation says that we are, we are actually literally jeopardizing ourselves and our kids because all these poorly rested kids and adults, next day, they have to go to schools and work. And I, I'm just questioning you here. Can you imagine anybody who is a lorry driver or a truck driver, if he was operating on very little amount of sleep, can you imagine the catastrophic problems that will arise when once that lorry driver or truck driver hits the road? Can you imagine what is going to happen? Because it is not easily... Um, the, the damage, we are not able to see it immediately. We think that this is... Uh, something that we don't have to worry about too much um here there is a this uh, okay so i i highly highly recommend anybody who is uh, interested in let me try to okay so this gentleman here i highly recommend this book uh, i am a huge fan of this book so he says that matthew walker uh, and he has written this book called Why We Sleep, The New Science of Sleep and Dreams. So what he says is, the more you are awake on a daily basis, as you're perpetuating this, you are creating, you're compounding that brain damage. And uh, I will show you the link between uh, this sleeplessness and Alzheimer's and how catastrophic. Once the brain doesn't sleep, it starts the body what it does is it makes the body revolt in such a catastrophic way. You are probably 21, you are probably 27, you are probably 35. You are not seeing it right now, 
but i can guarantee you that you will start seeing signs if you start looking for them you know uh, the inability to concentrate the the poor grades uh, if you are operating any machinery or if you are driving a car when you are less with, with less sleep the night before i just cannot tell you how catastrophic it is and it is uh, the brain what the brain is going through the damage it is going to make up in uh, you know by making the body revolt i have this uh, beautiful uh, just want to show you this so a few years ago this gentleman uh, don't know let me look at his name james mollison okay so he had he was a photographer he is a photographer and he creates this where children sleep portrait of inequality so the reason why i bring this up is because i want to request all of you that sleep is a luxury guys sleep is a luxury that you cannot take lightly so let me show you here some of the pictures that this gentleman releases in a book called where children sleep and it is to show the inequality can you imagine so sleep is such a luxury but we take it so much for granted um so let me try to edit this sleep is a luxury uh one second so i just want to show you this uh, pictures here so this child from china 9 years old look at his bedroom here okay so it just shows the inequality around the world as far as so there literally children who are sleep deprived who are hungry who are famished who are living in all these um refugee camps who are sleeping on this dirt uh, every single night we take sleep for such a, we take we take it so much for granted can you imagine uh elisa 8 years old is from usa this is part of her bedroom can you see the roof here it is literally ripped because it is leaking and this is her bedroom the door barely has space to open and this is her bedroom 8 years old elisa heated only by a wood stove yeah i just cannot tell you how privileged we are to be able to literally switch off the light in our houses and sleep yet we don't want to go to sleep uh this child in brazil 9 years old he is uh, unable to go to school he spends his days begging on the streets sleeping on whatever he can find at night an empty bench or an old sofa or pavement if this is hard can you imagine are you not grateful for your bed that you can so comfortably sleep on every night four year old kaya tokyo japan look at how many toys she has look at such a beautiful bedroom that she has in a small apartment and anybody who is in real estate uh, knows tokyo's apartments which are like 400 square feet 300 square feet and all these they and uh, the amount of rent or the amount of cost it, it takes them and uh, and everything has to be piled up like this vertically because there is no real estate uh, to put things but this is her bedroom i think they are well to do people here because obviously the kind of stash that they have so this is four year old kaya 14 year old prerna from nepal so look at this she is a domestic worker who earns 6 dollars 50 cents a month sleeps in a tiny cell like space at the top of her employer's house how many people do you know like this she goes to school three times a week and dreams one day becoming a doctor so this is on top of her employer's house she has a small cage like place you know with all her life's belongings in here and this is her this is where she sleeps can you imagine the life of a domestic help 
So Riza, 15 from Kyoto, Japan. She lives in with 13 other women uh, in a tea house in Kyoto, Japan, and an apprentice geisha. So the, she sleeps with five other women in a small room that doubles as a dining room as well as a tea room. Literally in one room. Like so many people in Mumbai, uh, Delhi, you know, Tokyo and every place is where real estate is such a high premium. You know, they they have to double down on this gentleman here. Janie, nine years old from New York. This looks like a fairly decent, luxurious bedroom. And he, let's see. Top floor, Fifth Avenue in New York. Nine-year-old likes to play the cello, kickball, and study his finances for Citibank on the Citibank website. Owns one of the luxury homes in Hamptons in Spain. So obviously he is, uh, as you can see, the disparity of uh, homes here and the bedrooms here. Just, just unbelievable. So um, just want to talk a little bit more about sleep deprivation and what it is going to cost. And here already we are seeing the effects of uh, sleep deprivation on our economy, if you can see. So what is sleep deprivation? So let's talk about sleep deprivation. And you can gauge for yourself if you are sleep deprived. Anybody who has less than seven hours of sleep. So we will also talk about the recommendations by the Sleep Foundation and uh, um, all these studies that they make. But seven to nine is the average for adults. So anything less than seven per day is uh, constitutes as sleep deprivation. So imagine if you are, uh, so I'll just put this statistic out here. Um, the CDC is uh, organization here in the US. Oops. Let me try to do this, just to move this up here. So anything less than seven hours is sleep deprivation. And the CDC here, what it says is, uh, let's see, causes more than, okay, I have the statistic here. Dude, why can't I move this? Okay, so here, can you see this? I don't think you can. Let me do this. I'll do this. Just cut this out and paste this in multiple. <laughs> okay. So it, sleep deprivation is causing more than $400 billion in economic losses annually and results in 1.23 million lost days of work each year. So just not for yourself as a human being, it is catastrophic, but it is also catastrophic for the economy. And this is not just an American problem. It is across everywhere, even in the UK, it is resulting in 30 billion pounds of revenue loss every year. So it is a product. It is a huge, huge cost to productivity. And again, imagine a sleep deprived truck driver on the road. What will he do with the machine that he has in his hand? So um, it, like accidents are likely to happen um, if you... Okay, so I wanted to put this out here. So let's look at one by one. Uh, so what happens if you stay up more than 18 hours? What happens if you stay up more than 18 hours? Okay. The first thing that happens is your... For any men who are interested in understanding how their um, body processes it, testosterone goes down. You start depleting because of your sleep deprivation. And of course, you can make it up if you get better next day. You can start getting back on the rhythm. But if you prolong this, every day you sleep less than seven hours, your testosterone, which is so supposedly the natural decline is 1 to 2% every year. But if you are going to sleep less than 5 hours, 5 to 7 hours a night, you have already aged. So one week of sleep deprivation will age you one decade. So this is the stats. Okay, so 
per annum per year 1 to 2% is what you should be depleting but just one week of sleep deprivation will reduce your testosterone level it will age you one decade just imagine the consequences of the on the body so again the the world health organization has declared in 2017 in two, finally finally in 2017 world health organization has called this to excuse me 2007 deemed let me just copy the whole thing so that you can see so world health organization deemed night shift work as a probable carcinogen so there are so many of us who have to work because there is a low choice they have to work in the night sometimes late night sometimes graveyard shift it is called the graveyard shift the night time shift if you don't have a choice there are things that you can do to regulate other areas of your life so that it doesn't become a uh, it doesn't show up as cancer in your body so the world health organization in 2007 excuse me this is 2007 they have said that the night time shift the graveyard shift is a probable carcinogen there is tons and tons of research to say that this is a carcinogen they don't have to say probable they are just sugar coating the shit here but it is a proven carcinogen okay what happens to the body as you keep going along so what happens to the circadian rhythm and the and the the effects on breast so let me show you breast prostate endometrium and colon cancer it's just staggering so that no wonder in 2007 world health organization declared night time shift graveyard shift as a probable carcinogen so so many people who work in uh, telemarket as telemarketers who are doing all these uh, um, work for uh, european countries and western countries and america and everybody who are situated in the philippines who are in india who are in uh, all these places who are working graveyard shifts it is extremely important that they are uh, understanding what this is going to do to their body long term so 17 to 18 hours if you stay 17 to 18 17 to 19 hours what happens is you are going to be experiencing levels of so this one also let me just so you are the cognitive impairment that you are going to go through you might feel like oh i am doing pretty good i don't uh, it, there is no problem i can understand everything i can comprehend everything no you are actually you have the cognitive impairment which is equal into as if you are drunk this is legally you are drunk once you have you haven't slept from 17 to 18 hours literally the memory box so matthew walker who wrote this book why we sleep he has said that it is like as if the memory of the inbox in our brain has shut down it is just going through the motions nothing is getting registered in our short term memory which will eventually be pushed to the long term memory so what happens is we are going to start we are become cognitively impaired we have also cortically blind it means we cannot process visual information so what is going to happen is you are going to become visually like cortically blind and you are not able to process any visual information even though you are going through the motions so this is at 24 hours this is going to be the situation at 24 hours if you have so many people so many people keep saying oh i i i just did not sleep the whole day i was just awake uh, but you are literally what you are doing is you are blind as a bat at that point you are not processing any visual information you are just like a zombie autopilot you are just like literally missing the stuff that is in front of you and this is from matthew walker's book why we sleep all this information so here um if you see of course there are people who say oh i haven't slept in one and a half days so what happens when you are at the 36th mark is you absolutely cannot recognize okay so uh you cannot filter any information so let me show you these two things extremely critical you cannot regulate your emotions 
you cannot regulate your emotions and your brain loses its ability how can i move this one second one second mm -hmm. let me do this i'll just uh, okay i'm going to copy this and put this here emotional regulation takes a dive and natural ability to run things through a filter you're always going to take things personally you will be an attack mode you will have no you will not uh, have any you know you lose all the sense of judgment you cannot read people's facial expressions you are misunderstanding everything you're misinterpreting you are ready to attack you are fighting with everybody of course in uh, let's go let's move on a little bit to 48 hours 48 hours so you can become like uh, hallucinations so let me see so this is what happens at so you have psychosis at that point of time you are having hallucinations you are talking you have no idea what you're talking about you are disconnected from reality you're prone to outbursts. So all these things are happening to you. You are literally becoming a psychotic patient at this point of time. 48 hours of no sleep. So this is, uh, all this is uh, fact-based. Fact this is not something that I'm making up as an Ekta Kapoor serial or anything. This is real uh, stuff, guys. Um, so sorry, I'm not paying attention to comments here. One second. Um, in olden times when phones were stuck with cards, we were free. <laughs> That is so true. Now we are tethered to our phones as if like it's like an umbilical cord. Absolutely. Uh, Ashish Maharaji, Vimeta Ji, welcome sir. How are you? Absolutely. Uh, thank you for all the notes. Absolutely, Vinita. Yeah, for, for reading a book is a great way to unwind. Yeah, just sitting and talking about uh, how your day went and yeah, everything. Exactly. Just we have lost all our, you know, the old school charm and we are just getting sucked, becoming screen suckers even in the nights. Um, Judy, welcome, ma'am. How are you? So, so Surabhi, uh, she has online classes till 1 a.m. in the night. Even I have to study late night because the environment is very calm, but I have... Shivki, uh, phones at least one hour before sleeping. Please help me. Okay, so Surviji, see, this is what I do. I also teach uh, all around the world, ma'am. So when I'm teaching in China or Dubai or uh, Australia or New Zealand, they are all these odd times for me. But I also try to uh, do some rituals, uh, you know, detoxing myself and keeping my phone away and trying to detox myself in other ways because some nights I have to stay up late. So it cannot be a daily ritual that, uh, you know, you cannot. So 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. is very critical. And you have to remember if you can move some classes or if you can, um, you know, uh, wake up at 4 a.m., 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., which is according to even our circadian rhythm, which is the best time to learn anything. So I have another picture that I want to show you. So here, best absorption. So here the lowest body temperature we wake up at 4 a.m to 6 a.m it is the best time of the day to learn anything so instead of staying up after your 1 a.m classes if you can hit the snoozies right away you can wake up early to be able to uh, uh, absorb more so um if it is a five day thing you will have to revisit your schedule because it's just uh, going to be very critical for your health long term uh, are you a student or a teacher? I'm not able to. I think you are. Uh, you're a student, I think. But what, what I'm guessing. Uh, but one a.m. the classes. Um, Shalaji, welcome, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much, Dinesh ji. Uh, appreciate that. This is. Yeah, Dinesh ji, yes, absolutely. See, night shifts uh, for eleven years. Wow. So you will have to incorporate some kind of a detox uh, uh, in your. Uh, you know, rituals so that you are like trying to make sure, you know, you're listening to your body, you're understanding the cues it is sending out. Uh, you know, sometimes we make irrational decisions if we don't have good amount of sleep. Uh, Arunji, welcome, sir. Uh, Shobha, thank you. P. Huji, welcome, ma'am. 
Absolutely, Shobhaji. That is the reason why uh, I wanted to take up this topic because so many of my brothers and sisters, uh, cesareans who are just uh, day in, day out burning midnight oil and it's just breaking my heart because if you guys want to live up to 60, if you want to not be tethered to a hospital bed, if you don't want to, if you want to live a productive, optimum life, uh, I was researching about Sushant's uh, optimal life schedule and everything and I thought uh, sleep had to be something that I had to address in a very elaborate way. Um, I'm going to show you how he lived an optimum life uh, sometime in the next coming sessions. But uh, he prioritized sleep so radically. He did not attend parties. He did not do anything. Uh, he did not take alcohol. Uh, he did not do anything in the evenings that will jeopardize his sleep schedule. Uh, we, we have to be very, very strict with our sleep. And especially when technology is here to just, uh, you know, take away our uh, um yeah, we have to understand that sleep is a luxury that most of us are not able to afford. We have to be much more grateful for that opportunity and sleep well. So, okay, so let's see what happens to the body and the mind when we are uh, not sleeping. So let me do one thing. I'll just uh, finish the rest of the pictures here that I had. So Jamie, we just saw Jamie and then, okay. So here on Ivory Coast, I think it is a Caribbean island. I'm not sure. But on Ivory Coast, look at this young boy. He's anonymous. His name is not there. Um, and look at the pillows and the bedroom and look at him. Uh, an orphan. Okay, there you go. An orphan and a refugee from the war in Liberia. This nine-year-old boy goes to school in Ivory Coast for ex-children, ex-child soldiers and lives in a concrete shack with some of his classmates. So this is also obviously a shared bedroom of a refugee orphan boy. And he was a previous soldier. He was also fighting in the war in Liberia. And this is his bedroom. So Joey, 11, Kentucky, USA. Um, so it looks like he this boy likes hunting. But look at his bedroom. It's a bunk bed, obviously. And... Uh, is a bullseye and there is some gear. Often accompanying his father on hunts, 11-year-old Joey owns two shotguns and a crossbow uh, and made his first kill a deer at seven. Okay, so look at his bedroom. It's fully camouflaged. Even the bear is camouflaged here. He has camouflage equipment. So once again, there is another girl from Nepal. Indira, seven years old, and look at her uh, bed, living with her parents, brother and sister near Kathmandu, Nepal, seven-year-old India, Indira works at a local granite quarry since she was three years old. She also attends school and shares a mattress with her siblings. Their house is one room, one bed, one mattress. So Jasmine for Kentucky, um, USA, and uh, it is a princess themed, I think, bed. Uh, and this is like a pumpkin, which turns into um, kind of a thing, I think. And she has so many sashes and uh, crowns that she has won over the years. She's looking like a cute little girl. Uh, but as you can see, just wherever, no matter what your bed looks like, guys, it is a luxury to be able to get those uh, snoozies in the night. So this one again from Japan, a 10 year old and uh, he's a champion sumo wrestler and has been competing for seven years. <laughs> he's 10 years old and he lives with his parents and younger sister. He's also part of the Boy Scouts. Okay, excellent. <sighs> Rome, Italy. And this boy is four years old Romanian boy sleeps on the family in a mattress in a field outskirts of Rome after begging for money to pay tickets. His family came from Romania by bus with no identity papers. His parents clean windshields at traffic lights since they cannot obtain legal work. Their entire family sleeps on this mattress. They are refugees from Romania who are begging on the streets, cleaning windshield wipers. Just... 14-year-old Latino child who is pregnant. And this is her bedroom for the third time. She has lost both the babies uh, when she was pregnant, 12 and 13. 
if this baby survives, she will have to be a single parent and drop out of school. Oh, my God. Okay, so let's go back to um, one of the pictures I had here from the slideshow. So let's go back here. Uh, let me do one thing. I just want to, okay. So again, how are we living? If you just understand what happens when we try to abuse. Okay, so let me do this. I'll just edit the topic here is effect of sleep on body and brain. So that is the topic. What happens to our bodies and our brains when we abuse our sleep. So again, um, this is this is what we are doing day in, day out, not treating ourselves, our brains well. But what truly happens is, let me show you little by little, lot of issues, right? From cognitive impairment to obesity, to immunity issues, to uh, just having brain fog. Oh, I'm just having a brain fog here. I didn't sleep well. Like that is it, our culture has become in such a way that it will it is like hustle culture. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Oh, it's like a badge of honor. I didn't sleep for 36 hours. I didn't sleep for 48 hours. Uh, but what is it doing to the adult body? What is it doing to the child body? So it is like uh, literally, let me write it down here once again. Let's go back to our notes. So the first thing I'm going to explain to you. So one thing is for sure, guys. One thing is for sure, no matter how many studies and I have, all these things that I'll post it in the YouTube link of all the sources that I'm talking about here. So here, so the shorter your sleep, the shorter your life. There is no doubt about this. How is this going to happen? So anybody who sleeps less than <coughs> six hours, have a two have a two hundred percent increase in heart attacks. That is uh, the that is how it is going to be. So in their lifetime, heart attacks you are going to be prone to more heart attacks because it's just simply that the body is revolting against the lack of sleep. So if you are going to sleep less than six to seven hours, you are going to live. Until 60, it is highly unlikely that without medical intervention, you will not be able to live without medical intervention. You are not going to be able to survive. And again, we were talking about melatonin and what the blue light of the technology is doing to you. Some people are actually sleeping with pillows underneath, phones underneath their pillows. I cannot tell you. I want you to please... Um, Google Deborah Davis. Deborah Davis is a Nobel Prize winning uh, lady. She, she's uh, Davis. She talks about this. Uh, Deborah Davis has talked about radiation, cell phone radiation, and uh, the problems that we are facing as a generation because of uh, technology. So please, please, she has also won the Nobel Prize for her work. Um, so please try to understand what technology is doing to you and what lack of sleep is doing. Without medical intervention, it is going to be impossible for you to be able to survive uh, lack of sleep for a very long time. You know, it is not like, uh, you know, blinking. So all these things, all these things, you can be on autopilot, blinking, breathing, uh, you know, one second, blinking, breathing, digestion, all these things, sure. You can be on autopilot. Okay. Uh, they are naturally going to be taken care of. But sleep has to be intentional. You cannot be uh, unintentional about your sleep. You have to educate your children, your teens, your parents. Parents have cell phones right now tucked away late in the night reading WhatsApp jokes and everything. You have to be able to understand that there is a connection uh, between so many people now reporting So people, the people now reporting Alzheimer's disease, so many people uh, who used to, Margaret Thatcher, uh, Ronald Reagan, all these people who used to boast that, ha, I don't need sleep. I can live without sleep. I, I, I can be a hustler. I can do this. I can do that. All those people surprisingly, not so surprisingly, were victims of the Alzheimer's disease. The amyloid deposits, which are the toxic proteins, they keep on building up, building up, building up. And if 
There is no sleep. There is no other effective way to bottle brush and clean your brain and get rid of these toxins. There is no other way. There is no other way. You will create space for new memories to come in. There is no way your brain will be able to cope with all these toxic proteins. And that is what is memory loss because some of the things stop functioning. It's just as simple as that. Please, please, neurotoxins. I just cannot study after study, study after study. Uh, let me show you. So 25%, 25%. So let me talk about the effects of sleep on the brain. 25% of uh, nutrients is taken up by the brain, but it only has 2% of the mass of the body. Okay. So what happens is the brain is such a pivotal organ and sleep is the only one that can restore your brain to normalcy every single day. Otherwise, what happens is you keep on building toxic waste inside it because of ye, ye, isne ye bola, isne wo kiya, isne wo kaha, uh, and all those shitty things that you keep on carry, they will become neurotoxins in your brain. And the only way the brain can clean itself out, it is called the glymphatic system. Just like the lymphatic system that is there everywhere in all your joints and everything that cleans out all these extra fluids. Why do people, pee? people who are 50 years old are getting knee surgeries right now? Why are they having to go, go to, because of fluid buildup, their lymphatic system is not working. Just like that, our brains have lymphatic cleaning systems. If you are not going to respect it, the brain literally opens up in the night. It st structurally changes so that it allows all the fluid to get itself cleaned up the blood actually reaches the brain and cleans it up and the brain structurally changes in the night so that it can allow for that glymphatic cleaning to happen so this is a study uh, that I will post all of these uh, names that I am using right now and all these uh, things so please 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. The neurotoxins are getting cleaned every day in, in a deep sleep state. If you are not going to respect that, your brain, your body are going to revolt. So Dr. Judy Owens, the director of sleep medication in uh, Boston Children's Hospital, and she is also a professor in neurology in Harvard Medical School. What she says is this glymphatic system, all these, uh, the, all these thoughts, all these thoughts, thought currents in our brain throughout the day, they are going to get deposited and what they do is all these things in the long term memory, they're not cleaned day in, day out. They leave, they physically lead to abnormal processes in the brain and that is what will lead to psychosis. That is what is leading to bipolar. Of course, this is all cyclical, right? So a bipolar patient cannot sleep and if he doesn't sleep, his mental condition is going to further degrade. So all these things are very important for us to understand. And there is a um, uh, very good study by the University of Rochester Medical Center in New York University. What they say is, uh, yeah, mental metabolites, that's what they are calling them. And the mental metabolites throughout the day that have been accumulated, what the brain has to do is using its glymphatic system, it has to clean up everything through the cerebral spinal fluid that uh, is allowed in our deep sleep state. So brain is the most active du during our sleep because it can perform these rituals. It is extremely important that we understand that it is literally like uh, taking the dumpster and picking out all the things that is not needed by the brain for the brain to process optimally in the next day. So uh, again, uh, metabol uh, the metabolic toxics toxins that you have to get rid of i've talked about that okay so next uh, yeah so why is all this happening again let's revisit uh, what we are doing to our bodies why are we in this so what has happened in the last 10 years 15 years since the smartphone revolution is we are discounting our need for sleep and more and more we are you know, staying up, we are letting the blue light invade our sleep. And what is happening is we are constantly being woken up to notification, text messages. We are checking our social media. We want to see what is the latest updates. We are hyper vigilant as a community right now. But but what, what is all this doing? Why should we 
uh, understand it so badly is because this is a machine, guys. Our body is a machine and we need to pause it. You know, every system needs a downtime and this is our downtime. Seven to nine hours, nine hours at the, eight hours at the minimum. Seven to nine hours is the recommended amount of sleep. Oh, I cannot uh, stress this enough. Okay, so what does the, even uh, Bhagavad Gita say? What is the, uh, how does it define sleep? Is all our senses dissolve into the mind. We don't have any external stimulation from the outside. We are letting our five senses dissolve into the mind. We are just completely shut down. No external stimulation. And uh, let's see. I have uh, some more information. Let's go back to this one. Okay. I have this. <laughs> okay. So some people have questions like what if uh, you know we are the morning types we are like uh, what if we are night owls and everything right there is so matthew walker also says that there is a population that is the morning types the early risers who are like 40 percent of the population and then by preference some people who go to bed late and wake up late who are 30 percent of the population but remember we are not following the circadian rhythm when we choose our preferences to be like this and of course, the remaining 30% of the population is somewhere in between. You know, sometimes they stay up late, sometimes they wake up late, all kinds of things. So just uh, um, trying to understand for one second. Okay. So I wanted to also incorporate jokes in the middle so that I can keep you engaged. Otherwise, you might just, uh, where is the last slide? I'll show you the last slide. Uh, I had this uh, this one so while i am talking you might act like you are uh, keeping your eyes open but you might also be sleeping off so <laughs> you might not be paying full attention so i had to incorporate jokes like this so that you are awake um so let's do this i have some more oops i have some more jokes here okay so i had some student jokes as well uh, just like what uh, um, she was just talking about one second suravi was just saying that, you know, you, um, she has to stay up late and uh, you end up getting all these dark circles. So, professor is thanking, uh, congrats, you made it to the end of the semester and the students are like <laughs> dark circles. So, one second, let me, sorry, I'll just go to the, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Shobhaji, absolutely. Anjanji, hello. Absolutely. But uh, earlier in the evening, Amarji, a lot of people, unfortunately, are going to the gym late at night and because of which also they are completely, their body is super hyper warm and they are not able to go to bed. Of course, uh, a good warm bath also helps uh, in sleeping, but that is for a different reason because the core temperature, um, it raises some other hormones also. But this one... Uh, exercise much earlier in the day absolutely and so that you are tired you're not physically getting exhausted because we are sitting in ac rooms uh, all day long so uh thank you shala ji appreciate that ma'am uh lena ji yes my cat is also uh sleeps yeah he is just legendary in terms of uh, uh <laughs> nature is amazing some even work has some in day absolutely i was like absolutely some flowers bloom at night. Yeah, you got the point. Absolutely. And uh, uh, but uh, we, if we have to take the cues from the sun, uh, obviously it is teaching us something uh, about our uh, body circadian rhythms. And uh, this is yeah, this is what sleep issues, especially in school, lead them to take up vaping. One reason for it so that they can cope. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, lot of uh, people are. Uh, you know, the the thing is. They are taking melatonin in the night so that they can sleep and they are taking Adderall and Ritalin and all those things in the morning so that they can calm down their nerves. So it's like, uh, you know, it's just a very bad uh, combination. It's becoming a vicious cycle. Absolutely, Judy. Yeah. Bhogi uh, Rogi Yogi. Yogi is the name of our dog. So it reminds me of that. Uh, it's funny. Uh, begin at begins at 8, 7 30 a.m. High school juniors and seniors and other activities go homework till 12 a.m. max and then get ready for 7 a.m. 
Yeah, so there has been a lot of studies also. If you see, there is a very nice video on that. Uh, this this research that this gentleman has done. I'll try to pull up that uh, if I have it. He he says that because the bus schedules in America were like staggered for elementary school, middle school, and high school, uh, they said uh, uh, earlier high schoolers were uh, having classes at 9.30 and 10 because their melatonin kicks in very, very late, uh, naturally. But what happened is the school system said, yeah, let's just stagger all these bus schedules so that it's easy for us to, you know, send them all uh, one after the other, you know, pick them up and uh, take them to school one after the other. And so high schoolers now are the earliest ones and elementary school kids who are the earliest to wake up have the have classes later now. It's just such a sad, sad thing. Um, I'll try to post that link if I find it now. Mm, Suravi ji, I think I already commented on that. Okay. Centered on the comments. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Judy, you got the point, yeah. Um, so some, some, we say sleepover. Exactly, you got the point. Yes, yes. Why do, literally, that is why you have to sleep over it because the brain has its own way of connecting long-term memories with the current situations and problems you are facing right now so that it can provide and it can link things up for you and align them for you in the morning for you to have an aha moment. Absolutely, this is one of the reasons why they say sleep over a problem. Absolutely. Yeah, you got the point. Um, so let's do this. Uh, I have a few more things to talk about. Um, so what is the biological clock? So let's do this. Uh, here, let's put this up. Okay, so what happens? So he, here is how I want you to think about it. Um, <laughs> do the side board here. I just want you to think of it like this. Okay, so if you want to sleep, okay, I just put this out here for the liver and the brain de detoxification process. I just wanted to put like this. Okay, so it is up to you to choose if this is how you want you to your body to take care of itself. It is up to you to choose. So what happens is, if you sleep at 3 a.m., going by all this, 3 a.m., you will literally have not detoxified anything. You did not even give a chance for your brain and your liver to detox your brain and your body at all. Okay. So sleeping at 11 p.m., you are giving full four hours to detox your body. 12 a.m., three hours. 1 a.m., two hours. 2 a.m., only one hour. But 3 a.m. if you sleep after your Netflix binge, there is zero chance for the liver and the body to uh, uh, clean itself, uh, the brain to clean itself up because this is how the body is always trying to reset you into its biorhythm. Okay, so it is like 4 a.m. It is starting to, okay, come back up, you know, sharpest blood, rise, uh, blood pressure rise. It is getting ready. Melatonin stops. And it is getting ready for a nice, productive, full day of uh, work. So that is how that is how you have to uh, understand this. Otherwise, it's just going to be, guys, and it is just common sense, right? If you understand any athlete, any endurance athlete, uh, whether you are getting ready to throw a javelin or whether you are trying to for your 100 meter sprint or anything like that, can they imagine? themselves to be sleepless the night before absolutely not and that is what sets world uh, the, these world class performance and performers and the regular folks like us and uh, this is what uh, even ariana huffington says uh, she also wrote an amazing book on the sleep revolution i highly highly recommend those of you who are interested transforming your life one night at a time what she says is if you are so you are still going to attend meetings. You're still going to do everything that you're supposed to do. You're still going to, uh, you know, participate in everything. But you are not going to be your 100% efficient self. Uh, because see, everybody will repair. Everybody will take care of things after the iceberg has hit the Titanic. But if you have a good night's sleep, you're alert and you're vigilant enough the next morning to see an iceberg which is about to hit the Titanic. So that is the difference. So do you want to be alert for everything that is going to come towards you or do you want to fix things after the fact? 
so um, this uh, book uh, that uh, on sleep revolution is uh, highly highly recommend um, and even so forget everything else right even if bhagavad gita was to uh, be taken as a cue from whatever we have learned um, gudakesha is uh, what arjuna is known as and gudakesha is also uh, somebody who has conquered who has mastered the art of sleep who is alert to his senses when the time is right so that is you want to be a guda kesha do you want to be a person who is alert with all his senses because when it is not time for your senses you can just put them and merge them with your mind in the night and sleep off and then you can uh, be awake when the time is right so that you are always alert for all these icebergs that are about to hit um so i will post a few uh, things that i want you to please internalize while i read some comments but i want you to the things that i want to highlight here okay okay so here yeah this okay so here william devant uh, from stanford on sleep deprivation and emotions from stanford university what he says is what happens with sleep deprivation and emotions is who get less than a full night of sleep sleep have a tendency to feel less happy more stressed more physically vulnerable and subsequently more mentally and physically exhausted okay literally sufficient sleep on the other hand makes us feel better happier and more active i mean the incentive for having a good night sleep i just cannot elicit more than this it's just uh you know and what happens if you are more interested in uh, what happens i highly recommend you to also search for this one uh if you want to understand fully about what happens to the cerebral spinal fluid and how it cleans up the brain and if you are much more interested in the science of what happens when we sleep to the brain and how it detoxifies itself uh this amazing tech talk from uh, one more reason to get a good night sleep it's fabulous and again as i mentioned some of the books by matthew walker and ariana huffington they are literally a game changer for anybody um, who is uh, okay and also there is a sleep and behavior problem problems in school let me just show you that one and then i will end with the pictures so this is do it come on okay so again this is a study which i highly recommend if you are interested from the american academy of pediatrics so if you see this what how sleep is so critical and anyone who is trying to make technology as the babysitter for their kids i highly please request you to read this out and see how the long term effects on the brain and the mental health and the body uh, are there uh, if you can just see this i'll post this link uh, if anybody is interested okay so this is good and then uh, one more thing yeah so let's end with this these pictures i think i am dude what happened to my internet sorry my internet just froze okay so there is a girl called li from beijing china and look at her bedroom a uh, 10 year old li is a perfectionist and lives with her parents in an apartment block in beijing she spends 3 hours a night working on her homework completing it to the highest standard so her bedroom here again this is a series uh, by james uh, this gentleman who created this series it's an amazing came out a few years ago uh, where children sleep is the name of the picture book and james mollison this is the gentleman uh, and i'm just looking at these pictures here one second so again um this is a bedroom uh, of a little girl in beijing china mexico city 12 year old maria she lives with her parents and older sister in a three storied house set around a courtyard and behind security gates in mexico city so obviously she is um one of the uh, you know well to do people in mexico security is taking very seriously wow this is one of her yeah, the drug the drug problem of drug cartels is very high and uh, that's the reason why they will have to live behind security gates i think okay so bilal the west bank of gaza near gaza i think he is uh, 
near Jerusalem. So he is lives in a one-room shack. They built by themselves on the Israeli settlement. So they are obviously refugees. He doesn't go to school but has to take care of his 15 goats. So this is the shack and this is probably also their bedroom overlooking some of the other settlements. <sighs> Nantio, 15, is from Kenya and is a member of the tribe and lives with her two brothers and sisters in a tent-like dome made from cattle hide and plastic with little room to stand. She went into a village school but decided not to continue and is becoming a warrior, that a warrior will select her for marriage. It's literally a shack made with cattle uh, skin. Wow. Rauti 8 from Cambodia. Cambodia, as we know, uh, it's one of the... Um, it's also one of the poorest uh, countries in the world. Extreme poverty and extreme crime, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, he sits on a rubbish dump where he sleeps on a mattress made out of old tires. So again, if anyone is questioning why sleep is a luxury, these pictures will prove that it is. So this lady, young lady is nine, New Jersey, USA, in a large house in New Jersey. Each child has her own bedroom. She wants to be a fashion designer and design her own clothes. Definitely one of the privileged children that we have seen in Scotland, Rhiannon, 14, from Scotland. Okay, lives in a terraced house in Scotland, plagued with heroin addiction and gang violence. Punk subculture, okay, so she is part of the punk subculture, as you can see her mohawk and um, a lot of hairspray. So this is her bedroom. I think she is like, um, she belongs to a punk subculture. So these are all the free pictures from the book that the gentleman had uh, shared. Um, this is a little bit of what I had. So please guys, uh, anybody who is questioning uh, why we need to sleep or anything, just to understand how sleep disruption has been really been a problem for us for so many years now, 18 years. Excuse me, 15 years. Excuse me, that's what I meant. Okay, sorry, I'm seeing comments now. Okay, so sleep disruption again, the amount of technology use that you do. And of course, video game, video game lobby, video game industry is a huge industry that is lobbying for us so that we continue playing violent games and not uh, sleep and not hang out with the people in the real world, as you know. So that's one thing. Um, again, homeostatic sleep drive. The earlier you wake up, the sleep pressure is going to keep mounting, mounting so that you naturally are ready for bed by 11 p.m. If you're also focusing to be careful about melatonin, not, um, you know, because your skin also has receptors, you have to be careful about technology use in the night. Um, this is CDC.gov uh, has shown this homeostatic sleep drive. This is our natural biorhythm that has been put into our bodies to allow for this to happen. Um, next. Okay. So this is, uh, finally a joke for all of you for hanging out with me for so long. Uh, and one second. I get up at 5.30. That is amazing. Katarvela ji. That is amazing. It is hard to get asleep. So many worries on the mind. So basically see worries on the mind. Everybody has uh, uh worry, sir. But if you practice the mindfulness, Right. right here, right now, when you are about to retire for the day, the problems, just because we are going to worry about them, are not going to uh, the, the, the dissipate or go away. Right. So right here in this moment, you have the luxury and the privilege to be able to call it a night and sleep well without worrying about some bombs or something like, you know, or you having to worry about your safety or anything like that. So just gratitude and being in the moment will really help. And of course, you're going to get up at 5.30 to tackle all your problems. You're not going to be passive about it, right? So that's uh, mindfulness teaches us that. So, um, okay. 
this is actually amarji you got the point actually i am uh, trying to send uh, a hint to a lot of my friends especially who are ssarians by doing this i know people will hate me but i have to do this uh, yeah unfortunately uh, he i just he you know people in leadership role like that should not be saying that i can make do with little amount of sleep and everything and that is setting a dangerous precedent for anybody who is uh, looking up to you as a role model so we have to be very careful i wish you modi ji even though he is a superman he did say all these things i've seen those interviews where he said that that is amazing yeah work out in the mornings is definitely better than working out uh, late yeah work out in us normal day <laughs> if you want more donuts i agree yeah gone over sleep yeah who has one over sleep i agree with you yeah um four states of nidra ja, ja, jagrat swapna su, supush supusti ha huh? sushusti yaar mera hindi and tu turiya yeah turiya i have heard turiya i have heard uh, is like a little you know it's it's a great state ah uh, sush so shupti okay so now i understand what i messed up so shupti okay is the best yeah no thoughts no well no worries okay, okay so turiya is impossible to achieve for me yeah. that is like uh, you have to be a yogi to achieve it. okay so shupti okay deep sleep absolutely absolutely and this is oh this is good yeah mandukya upanishad i think i've read this uh, but this is good stuff thank you this is so shupti Sringeri Sriya, Sankaracharya in 18th century. Wow, wow, very nice, very nice. Thank you. Chandogya is like uh, food and this one is sleep. Very nice. Um, yeah, just creating a bedtime ritual, just creating, being intentional about it, Judy. Just saying that, uh, you know, this is where I will call it a night. I'll wake up in the morning to deal with the rest of my homework or whatever. And just trying to be intentional about, uh, uh, you know, the the uh, for the sleep yes we are done so basically um, here sorry my cat and my dog are here and they need to be taken care of so here okay so here um, judy being uh, intentional about dude one second, one second yeah 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 dude that's why i keep you out of the one second okay so here uh, sorry guys um if you are going to be intentional about it if you can set a rhythm what is your biorhythm if you try to understand your biorhythm and try to align yourself every child right they will have a different your two kids might have a different biorhythm from each other L trying to understand their own bodies trying to create a bedtime ritual being intentional about sleep all these things play into the psyche of the brain where the brain is like aha okay so i see where we are going with this and it also understands based on the rituals you are doing it's a very smart uh, machine that we have up here so um, yeah just uh, you know we can talk more about it but uh, i always say pomodoro technique which is like uh, you know do 20 minutes of deep work deep focused work and have 5 minutes of entertainment what we are doing is we are reversing that as high school students we are we would rather be on our snapchat instagram reddit discord and all those apps than be doing the uh, important work right so how about you incentivize yourself for doing good work so that you finish your work quickly and then have a chance to quickly get to bed so um their mantras for nidra devi <laughs> okay so so meditation for no yoga nidra yeah mental detox okay thank you thank you thank you so much yeah yeah agarbatti's camp for yeah just be careful with agarbatti's right now agarbatti's and candles and all of them have a lot of proven carcinogens so please don't have them very uh, near to you uh, yeah 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 definitely rosemary oil or any natural oils uh, like i use let me show you big screen pe eh? uh, tea tree oil calms me down oops there is tea tree oil essential oil it calms me down really well this is really good 
um, yeah, yeah, peppermint oil, any of these naturally occurring oils are better than uh, candles or agarbattis or all that because they have proven carcinogens inside them. Um, so please, anybody who is interested in lighting candles and all that, please watch out and read uh, ingredients because it's very important. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I did not know that I have to observe that, but I have to be. Some days I'm awake for the Brahma Muhurta, some days I'm not. So, okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you for playing along. Thank you. Um, and let's just end with these. I wanted to have a joke. So, uh, once again, a student joke. I'll just leave you guys with this. And then. So, oops. I wanted to put this up here. Okay. So, is it? So how, if you are a student, what will you do when you're sleeping in class and suddenly wake up and act as if you're concentrating on the lecture? So I say I wanted to put this up for anybody who is, uh, I daydream. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much for playing along. Thank you, Judy. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, please, please prioritize the sleep radically. If you want to be a superhuman, sleep is the only route the only way to go okay thank you and then i will leave you guys with a uh, few more things that i have one second this is a joke i had okay so i wanted to leave you with this okay thank you guys over and out until next time goodbye